And what was interesting was several things came out of that, but um, the first thing was that not all countries had to participate in Kyoto, but not all had to take action. Only the developed nations were required to reduce their level of CO2. The developing nations were excluded. Now, of course, at that time, China was, and in some ways you can argue it still is, a developing nation. So it wasn't required to meet any targets under Kyoto, nor was India. The U.S., of course, held out. And what's interesting is that the U.S. Senate voted 95 to nothing against the Kyoto Accord, even though Al Gore was the vice president at the time. And uh, lucky for him, he didn't have to cast a, a deciding vote. But um, uh, so it was 95 to nothing against it because the U.S. Senate saw, no, this is, this is a, a socialist distribution of wealth. This is, this is going to cost jobs and economy. And so they scrapped it completely. We're now told that you have to buy carbon offsets. In other words, if you have sinned by having a carbon footprint and by carbon emissions, you've got to buy a carbon offset, which is usually a scam. Somebody claims to have planted an acre of grass in the third world. It never happened. They take your money and laugh all the way to the bank. But they're telling you that in order to cleanse your guilt, you've got to buy a carbon offset. Talk about carbon polluters. You talk about them. It's my understanding that back in 1997, when you were vice president, Enron's CEO, Ken Lay, was involved in discussions with you at the White House about helping develop this type of policy, this trading scheme. And, uh, is, that, is that accurate? Is it inaccurate? It's, it's been reported. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but, but I, I met with uh, uh, Ken Lay, as lots of people did, before anybody knew, knew uh, that he was a right. crook. And, and clearly, it, you can see why so many of us are concerned about this type of cap-and-trade energy uh, tax that would be literally turning over this country's I energy economy. I didn't know him economy. well enough to call him Kenny Boy. Well, you, but you knew him well enough to help devise this trading scheme, and obviously we know what Enron and these big guys on, uh, on Wall Street like Goldman Sachs, and I know you've got interest with Goldman Sachs. No. Well, it's, that's been reported. Is that not accurate? No, I, I wish I did. With executives from the, you're partnered in companies with executives from Goldman Sachs. Well, if you're not. Al Gore has got to be the greatest con artist in modern history. This guy claims he invented the Internet. Even though it's on record, he's a liar, and he got away with it. He was the pitch man that successfully sold, as vice president, NAFTA and GATT. This lowered the standard of living in the United States and Mexico and almost completely deindustrialized our country. Now he's saying you should pay him and his private company, set up by Enron, a carbon tax on breathing. Look, if you want to buy Al Gore's propaganda, go ahead. But before you do that, you should at least look into the claims he's making. There was a meeting in the White House in 1998 between Al Gore and uh, Bill Clinton, Ken Lay, and Lord Brown. Okay, well, who were these people? Well, we know the president, the vice president. Ken Lay, of course, was the president of Enron. And Enron was a major, major player in the carbon credit, carbon trading. And, and, in fact, stood to make an enormous amount of money out of it. And, and so it was part of, of the, I think, part of the collapse of, of Enron. And Lord Brown, of course, was the head of the largest oil company in, in the world. And um, they were looking to buy into this, as is happening now, where the energy companies are becoming the big promoters of, oh, we've got to go green, we've got to go to alternate energies, and all of this uh, this stuff they saw a business opportunity and leapt onto it, and one that would make them look green again. When it came time for the 1,200-plus page greenhouse gas emission and carbon legislation to be voted on, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, would not let the Republicans, or even members of her own party, see the bill until minutes before the vote. Republican Minority Leader John Boehner engaged in a rare House filibuster and read shocking section after shocking section from the legislation. I really hate to do this, but when you file a 300-page amendment at 3.09 a.m., the American people have a right to know what's in this bill and have a right to know what we're voting on. Page 48. Each building code enforcement department receiving a grant under subsection A 
shall impanel a code administration and enforcement team consisting of at least one full-time building code enforcement officer, a city planner, and a health planner or similar officer. I can take you uh, to Chickasaw, Mercer County in my district. They don't have one full-time person that works for the village, all right, not one. Look at the mandate on every city village in America right here in this bill so that we're not only going to tell you what the codes are going to be, but but we're going to tell you how many people you need to hire to enforce this. Page 41, determine any geographic area within the contiguous United States that lacks a federal power marketing agency. Because, you know, we can't move power around the country without a federal power marketing agency. We do it today, but now we have to have a new government agency to do this. All California housing standards are now going to be imposed on every American community. You don't have the right to have your own building standards in your community or in your state. Hell no! The federal government's going to tell you what they are. It quickly became clear why Pelosi and the Democratic leadership were desperate to keep the contents of the bill secret before the vote. Now, because of this underlying bill, the federal government will virtually have control over every aspect of lives for the American people. It is time to stand up and say, we get to choose. We choose liberty or we choose tyranny. It's one of the two. The underlying bill represents the tyranny and the intervention of the federal government. It's our choice. What will we choose today? Will we choose liberty or will we choose tyranny? And I know that we'll be facing the single moms that heard from last summer. They can't afford the gasoline bill. They can't afford the propane. You didn't do a great thing. You hurt some really decent families struggling, trying to make it. And this is going to be their death nail. It breaks my heart. I yield back. It is, of course, a carbon tax on economic activity, farming, manufacturing, real production here inside the United States. It would tend to shut down even those miserable remains of an industrial economy that we still have after the collapse of the Detroit automakers and their related uh, subcontractors and so forth. Every home and business in the United States would be federally regulated and controlled. Mandatory home inspections will be carried out by federal inspectors, and it's all at the expense of the homeowner. In New York, they're called the environmental police. On this day, a surprise visit to a market in Brooklyn's Chinatown. And every day you're not in compliance, you face huge fines. Go to page 235. The secretary may set and collect reasonable inspection fees to cover the cost of inspections required. So number one, they can come in, the federal government can come in, inspect your house, and send you the bill. And if they find that you're out of compliance with this new federal code, the secretary shall assess a civil penalty for violations of this section. And then further, going to page 236, each day of unlawful occupancy shall be considered a separate violation. We're setting up a global warming Gestapo that can literally come in, and now this new term, unlawful occupancy. So now living in your home is considered unlawful under this bill. This is ludicrous. Worst of all, carbon czars in more than 35 federal agencies are given unlimited dictatorial power to tax all forms of carbon and carbon emissions. The Commissar Green Police openly brag that they will have the power to selectively enforce the new edicts on a case-by-case -case basis. It's funny because when I tell people what I do for a living, uh, they, the first response usually is, you're the environmental police, there is no environment in New York City. With this new power, the Green Mafia can take over the entire economy through selective enforcement. We know, Madam Speaker, that this national energy tax will cost the American people $2 trillion. We know that. We know this will result in a loss of two.